This standard is a culmination of student learning in which the students recognize that a two-dimensional figure is similar to another if the second can be obtained from the first by a sequence of reflections, translations, rotations, and dilations. In this standard, students will describe a sequence of transformations that can prove similarity between two figures. As a result, it will be important that students can identify similar shapes produced by dilation. Specifically, students will learn that similar figures have congruent angles and that the corresponding sides of each shape are proportional. Students will be able to determine the scale factor by which the dilation has, to, has occurred. It is important for students to distinguish between congruent figures and similar figures. Two plane or solid figures are congruent if one can be obtained from the other by a rigid transformation, a sequence of rotations, reflections, or translations. Similarity as it relates to transformation is defined as a rigid motion followed by a dilation. In the mathematics series videos for MGSE 8 G1 and MGSE 8 G3, students concluded rigid transformations such as translations, reflections, and rotations produce congruent figures and including dilations or non-rigid transformations produce similar figures. Let's look at this standard in action. Listen to the students' observations of what makes these triangles similar and not congruent. Triangle ABC onto triangle DEF. Okay, so I've noticed that the triangle at the top is larger than the one at the bottom. Yeah, I think that they're similar and it was like a reflection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was a reflection too. Maybe a, dial a dilation. Because uh, it kind of got smaller, not bigger, so probably a dilation. Did it get smaller or did it get bigger? If we're going from A, B, C to D, E, F. Oh, it, it actually got, got larger. It got bigger. Yeah. yeah. Students were asked to use their mathematical reasoning to prove the triangles were actually similar and not congruent. They are the same angles. Yeah, it's dilation. So the angles are the same. So are the angles congruent? Yes, yes, they are. What part of the triangles are not congruent? The, the length of each side. The length of each side. And so because the length of each side is not the same, those triangles are not congruent. And as you said, they are similar. A variation to this task would be to have students complete a graphic organizer similar to this one using reasoning. In this illustrative mathematics task, students are using rotations translations, reflections, and or dilations to determine whether the two polygons are similar. In the second quadrant and the bigger arrow is in the fourth quadrant. I noticed that the big arrow was facing down and the upper arrow was facing to the right. They're actually the same shape. They're just bigger sizes and facing different directions. I feel that the arrows have translated. The distance of the smaller arrow is four, and the distance of the bigger angle is, I mean, bigger arrow is eight. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. Well, the point of the point of the smaller arrow is actually like negative one and goes up four in the first quadrant. Mm -hmm. And the arrow, the point of the arrow for the big one is over three down seven. Yeah. Well, I noticed that it translated four units to the right and it rotated. Yeah, I saw that too. As you listen, you'll notice how students are able to describe sim single transformations, really, like, but do not describe the transformations in a sequence. To, teach me how to, do to determine mastery of this standard, students should be able to articulate the sequence of the transformation. For example, students may say the shape translated, rotated, translated, and then dilated. Made the arrow get larger. 
I think it made what made Daryl get larger was the the rotation. What's it called again? Dilation. <laughs> and when we are determining dilation, we use scale factor. You said that the distance for the smaller arrow is four, but then the distance of the larger arrow is eight. What do you think the scale factor was for that dilation? I think the scale factor was two or one half. Okay, which one do you think? Which one do I think what? Which one do you think is the actual scale factor? If we start with the small arrow, and go to the larger arrow, which one would be the scale factor? Two or one half? Um, two. Do you all agree? Yeah. yeah I think it's two because yes. like multiplying four by Top two. two. Is eight.